I like to get the dimensions on paper so I can rough out a concept drawing to help me make a plan. The concrete block is coming up easily with my wrecking bar. I want to stack them all on a pallet around the side so I can wash them off thoroughly. I'm going to need them clean for when we come to sticking them down later. You come and go like a monsoon rain. You had a show like a lightning bolt. You have it all. The latest addition to the back entrance of this house is putting this laser light or polycarbonate awning up. We reframed it, added new polycarbonate on the top. It was part of a general rehabilitation of this whole back entryway, including relaying these pavers, adding some new custom-made pavers, installing these stone steps on either side of this deck, which were made out of the leftover material of the front entry on the other side. I'm going to take you through the whole process of the demolition of the old awning, swapping out the tin roof for transparent polycarbonate, reframing it, my client wanted to have more light coming through on this side of the house so she could get more light in here on the shady side of the house. So that's why we've replaced the iron with transparent polycarbonate. My first step in this project is to get some measurements of the old pavers and the step area we're going to reconstruct. I like to get the dimensions on paper so I can rough out a concept drawing to help me make a plan. Our next job is going to be rebuilding this entryway here. We're going to reuse all these old concrete blocks, clean them up, relay them over a concrete foundation. I'll go through all that process as we're doing it. We're going to be building a new step here to replace this log step here. This is going to be built out of concrete block and clad in sandstone. We have a lot of sandstone left over from the previous job on the other side of the house which is a sandstone pathway and staircase. Similar situation, creating an entryway onto a deck area where it's ergonomic, safe. Today's task is going to be to tidy up this area, remove everything that's unnecessary. We've got to wash and stack all these blocks around the corner. I've got a little staging area around there. Then we've got to excavate this whole area and prepare it to relay them. I'm going to be creating a treated timber frame to reset all these concrete blocks. I've already created a concept drawing here with some accurate measurements and help quantify all the materials we're gonna need. I always do some kind of rough drawing to help calculate things. It's easy to think about it when you can visualize it. This will create a nice ergonomic and safe entryway into the front of the house. The first thing I need to do is clear things out of the way so I have access to the concrete block. After removing some of these excess building materials out of the way, I need to deconstruct the log they've been using for a step. Let's get out, can leave this city. Let's drive to the open air. Yeah, the countryside is so pretty with the wind blowing in. coming up easily with my wrecking bar as it's just laid in sandy dirt. I want to stack them all on a pallet around the side so I can wash them off thoroughly. I'm going to need them clean for when we come to sticking them down later. Sick and tired of the nine to five in the city light. Hey darling, we could get out of town. I wouldn't normally use hollow block as pavers, but these pavers have been in place for many years and my client likes them and she wanted to reuse them if possible. So by adding a stable foundation of gravel and concrete, we can make an effective pathway out of these old pavers. Let's get out, we can leave this city. Let's drive to the open air. Yeah, the countryside is so pretty double handling heavy materials like this, I've set up a cleaning station right next to where I'm going to stack the cleaned block. The blocks need to be cleaned thoroughly 
They've been lying in dirt for quite a long time and some of the dirt has made its way into the hollow part of the block. So I want to blow all this dirt out with the hose. I also want to take care to make sure the outside surface of the block is extra clean as this will be creating our bond with our mortar onto the concrete foundation later. After the cleaning process, I stack them neatly on a couple of timbers and move on to excavating the dirt in preparation for our concrete foundation. I want the excavation of this dirt to be as accurate as possible. Because we're creating a pathway and a step onto an existing deck area, I use the deck as reference to how much dirt I need to remove to add our gravel foundation and concrete base. The location we're working at is very close to the beach. So the soil here has a lot of sand in it and it's very easy to dig and excavate. I'm using all this excess soil to finish off the pathway we completed on the other side of the house. I set this path at ground height, but the existing ground was uneven. So we have some voids to fill with this excess dirt. Can I tell you what's been on my mind? Sick and tired of the nine to five in the city light. Hey, darling. This project is really a continuation of the previous project, constructing the sandstone pathway, as we're going to be using a lot of the leftover materials. The concrete step is going to be clad in leftover sandstone from the crazy paving on the front and there's enough gravel and concrete left over to create our foundations. Let's get out, we can leave this city Let's drive to the open air Yeah, the countryside is so pretty With the wind blowing in your hair I periodically measure the excavation against the deck with my tape measure. I want to have 600 mil of clearance for where we start our foundation under the deck. As I get close to the depth needed, I'm careful not to overdig the excavation. I don't want to disturb the natural compaction of the sand. I want this to be as solid as possible for when we put our foundation on it. When I reach the correct depth, I start to smooth out this section with my shovel as reference for the rest of the excavation. With the depth established, I measure out with my tape measure from the deck to where the pathway ends and mark it with my shovel as a visual reference to where to stop digging. I can now clearly see how much dirt there is left to remove. I'll use this excess dirt to complete the finishing touches on another project we completed on this property. During the construction of the sandstone pathway staircase, I also rebuilt a patio entryway on the back corner of the house. This involved the relaying of second-hand pavers on a raised concrete foundation so it could tie into the pre-existing timber steps onto the deck. Because of the extensive foundation work I did to rehab this patio, I can make good use of this excess soil. By top dressing the exposed gravel, I can enable the grass to grow back flat and even around the whole structure. I finish off this process by wetting the entire area down to help settle the dirt in place and also stimulate the grass to grow back. Pack our bags and get in that car Leave a little note and we'll drive real far Let's get out, we can leave the final step in the excavation is to make sure I've got a completely flat and plumb base by referencing it with my levels so we're ready for the next stage of our construction. One of the things to be mindful of when you're excavating around an existing home is to take extra care to not dig through any existing infrastructure that's connected to the house. In this case, there's a water pipe connecting the water tank into the house, which is laying under the front of our pathway. I'm carefully removing some soil along the length of it, so it'll sit comfortably under our gravel bed. 
The final step in this deconstruction will be to remove the two posts that hold up this railing system that's been used as a drying rack for wetsuits when they come back from the beach. We'll be reconstructing a drying rack for them with some more practical materials in the rebuild. We can look back someday Baby, don't you understand That we only get one life I wanna make it count Come on now and take my hand Hey, darling Can I tell you what's been on my mind? Sick and tired of the nine to five in the city light the last thing I need to do in my excavation process is relocate this little guy that we disturbed during the digging. See the beautiful world around, wanna see it now. Pack our bags and get in that car. Join me on the next episode as we build the treated timber frame and start the construction of our stone step. Let's get out, we can leave this city. Let's drive to the open air Yeah, the countryside is so pretty With the wind blowing in your hair We can look back someday Baby, don't you understand That we only get one life I wanna make it count, honey Come on now and take my hand Hey, darling when it's me and you On the road with a couple of tunes And a cockatoo Hey, darling You know we're gonna have a really good time Driving in the middle of the night When the stars are bright Pack our bags and get in that car real far Let's get out We can leave this city Let's drive to the open air Yeah, the countryside is so pretty With the wind blowing in your hair We can look back someday Baby, don't you understand That we only get one life I wanna make it count Honey, come on now and take What's been on my mind Sick and tired of the nine to five in the city light Thanks for joining me this week in my YouTube channel. Check the link below and while you're at it, hit the subscribe button or make a comment so I can help you with your future construction solutions. And don't forget to follow our channel for more ideas and how-to tips for home and garden projects.